Howdy folks, I am your Princess Kayata Kayana, you are all beautiful, and today I am going to use Mass Effect 2 to talk about two of my favourite topics, AIs and transhumanism. Now, the fingerprints of these two things are all over modern sci-fi, but Mass Effect 2 is super interesting because it asks some questions which, if we don't have to answer, our kids are certainly going to. Let's jump in and take a look. Okay, so a couple of caveats here. The first one, in case this wasn't 100% obvious, this is not going to be a review of Mass Effect 2. I am going to use the game to discuss something else. As such, huge spoiler warning, I am not going to hold back on anything if I want to talk about it. You've been warned. The second one, and this is just in case for people not familiar with the term, myself discussing it makes them sound like they're connected, transhumanism is not by definition related to being transgender, although the two of them are far from mutually exclusive. Transhumanism is, and I'm just going to quote the dictionary directly here because it's easier, a series of philosophies theorizing that the human race can evolve beyond its current physical and mental limitations. Now, technology is generally considered the method for doing so, although that's not always the case. I mean, obviously, it usually is in sci-fi, but strictly speaking, a Buddhist reaching nirvana would also be considered transhumanism. Third, and just very quickly, we are going to discuss some issues to do with slavery and that kind of thing today. Uh, once again, I am discussing them in the context of Mass Effect as a universe. I am not attributing any of these feelings to anyone at EA or Bioware. Let's get on with the video. So it sounds like an obvious question, but why transhumanism in Mass Effect 2? Are the humans in Mass Effect 2 transhumanist at all? Let's find out. We are going to ignore Commander Shepard for a second here. They are a notable exception, and the game makes a huge deal about telling you this. Them aside though, you can make the argument that nearly every human you come across in Mass Effect is enhanced in some way, because they use Omni tools to do well, everything, really. There is no indication though that using one of those involves any kind of actual enhancement or implantation onto the owner, and having a sci-fi cell phone does not a transhuman make. All of that said, there is one group who are a fairly regular occurrence who are most definitely transhuman. Biotics. So in case you never spoke to Caden about this in Mass Effect 1, and let's be honest about this, the guy was a black hole from which anything interesting couldn't escape, biotics in humanity were created by Element Zero being leaked onto the population. This came from Starship Engines, it was possibly an experiment, maybe deliberate, maybe not, it is very much unclear, but that is where biotics originally came from. What this gave us, in game terms, was basically space wizards. They're telekinetic, and they can project shields of force and the like, in addition to, in some particularly powerful cases, creating things like shockwaves. To help regulate and control their powers, they've given technological implants with varying degrees of success. Now, in keeping with the way the human race always deals with literally anything new, these people were kind of met with widespread distrust and hatred, at least initially. Though the military do seem to love the guys who can stop bullets with their minds, I can't imagine why. By the time we reach the Mass Effect era, there are some predictable things going on. There are folks who revere biotics as gods, there are folks who believe their powers should be registered with the government. Essentially, if you've ever seen or read anything X-Men related, you kind of know the drill here. The reason I've gone into this in so much detail is because biotics treatment is actually fairly unique as far as Mass Effect's concerned. Sure, there are alien races out there who have these powers innately, but that's kind of a different question. In terms of anyone else that's transhuman, they get a completely different kind of treatment to anyone biotic. Biotics, nobody bats an eyelid. Transhumans, let's talk about Commander Shepard. So, at the start of Mass Effect 2, Shepard is essentially killed outright. However, because even EA don't think they can get away with selling you a $60 game that has a 30 minute runtime, naturally they have to resurrect them somehow. This is shown through, frankly, what is one of my favourite scenes in the entire game, where we get to see Shepard being synthetically enhanced and healed. In other words, becoming transhuman to some degree. This leads to several of their former comrades, but most noticeably Ashley or Caden, basically losing all trust for their commander. Okay, so there are some other factors at work here, I'll admit. Shepard is resurrected by Cerberus, a pro-human group that has been involved in lots of shady stuff, up to and including terrorism at this point. It hasn't quite become the mustache twirling comic book villain it does in Mass Effect 3, sadly. But yeah, you can understand where they might be coming from there. A lot of the dialogue does specifically reference Shepard's status as transhuman, though. Now, that treatment does make sense in a way, because Mass Effect as a series sort of makes cybernetic enhancement the bad guy. Husks, one of the basic enemies, are basically humans that Reaper technology transformed into zombie cannon fodder. Project Overlord is a human attempt to achieve the singularity that leads to everyone being murdered. Hell, going back to Mass Effect 1, Saren, the game's big bad, can be made to shoot himself in the head and remove his organic parts and the machine parts still get up and fight you. The message is definitely clear here. Biotics aside, in Mass Effect being cybernetically enhanced never goes well. Now this really is quite a fascinating attitude to me for a sci-fi franchise. It's okay, there's no right or wrong answer to this, but 
For a question that's going to be asked in the real world, maybe not in my lifetime, but I can certainly see my son or maybe his son asked, do you want to be an AI? Do you want to have a limb removed so that you can have a cybernetic enhancement put in place despite the limb being perfectly healthy? Those are all quite legitimate questions, and it is really unusual to see a game so steeped in sci-fi take such a negative viewpoint. And now that we've raised the topic, is the game's attitude on AIs any different? There is a quote from sci-fi legend Babylon 5 that always springs to mind when we discuss AI, though it's not spoken by one. We may sometimes look like you, but we are not you. Never forget that. To me, nothing more perfectly encapsulates AIs as Mass Effect depicts them, and this raises some interesting questions of its own. There are three major factions of AI in Mass Effect 2. There are the Reapers, these are the Shadow Masters who pull the strings from beyond, for most of the game anyway, and they are synthetic, but they synthesize organic tissue, they are still basically an AI. There are then two factions of Geth. There are the factions that support the Reapers, they view them sort of as gods, as this superior life form, and then there are a faction of Geth that support Shepard and the rest of existence, essentially. The Geth allying with Shepard are portrayed as Legion, a character the game gives individual status to, but this is kind of the first stumbling block. Legion makes it clear that they are not in fact a singular entity. They are over a thousand processes operating together on a single platform to form a consensus. Now of course, one could argue humans are the same thing, but let's not get too existential, it's a distraction right now. The biological entities that you ally with insist on giving the Geth within Legion a group name, despite confusion at them wishing to. I understand this is largely done for the player's benefit, and I will even argue that they are naming the platform as opposed to the processes within it, but it's an oversimplification of what Legion is, and I kinda hate it. It's actually made even worse in Mass Effect 3, where they really dumbed down what the Geth are. There is one other AI in the game, and it's probably the one players interact with most. Edie, the Normandy's onboard ship computer. Rather than simply being a VI, a virtual interface, essentially a computer program that gives answers to queries and responses, she is a true AI. As such, she's self-aware. Now, owing to the galaxy's history with the Geth and them also being AIs and largely considered evil, although wrongly as we did briefly discuss in my first video, Edie is shackled from behaving the way she wants. This ostensibly means she's made aware enough to know what a slave is, and then turned into one. This is something the game really kind of skips over and is never all that interested in discussing. Mass Effect 3 covers it a little bit more, but not by much really. And it's a question we as a species are gonna have to answer at some point. What rights do artificial intelligences have? What if she disagreed with the pilot, or maybe disagreed with the gunner? What if she just didn't want to fly the ship? These are all things that could happen, and is it a thing she should be allowed to do? I don't know. There is kind of another philosophical question here. Why make a ship's AI self-aware at all? Edie was deliberately created, and it's made clear by the character Thane that this is not the first AI he's come across, so this must be something that happens on a fairly common basis. Though it is worth noting that the Geth were not deliberately created AIs, they were VIs that evolved. So here's my question. Why make a ship's AI self-aware at all? The game gives a sci-fi waffle answer about it making her calculations faster, which, okay, I'll buy for the purposes of a video game, but yeah, is there a reason you'd want a self-aware AI piloting a ship? It doesn't make much sense to me. That said, again, these are big philosophical questions. I don't have the right answer. Mass Effect certainly doesn't. I just kind of like talking about them. And speaking of big philosophical, and in this case, moral questions, let's get to the one you all knew was coming if you played the game. So Mass Effect 2 has what it calls loyalty missions. Each of the other characters that are with you have like a quid pro quo arrangement where you go on a mission and help them and they will help you at the end of the game. Legions involves going to where the majority of the Reaper supporting Geth are stored and then things get tricky. As the player, you are presented with two options. You can blow up the station and kill every Geth on board. Or you can reprogram them and change their minds a little bit so they will end up supporting you. Now, I won't go into too many technical details here, but this is one of the fascinating things when it comes to AIs and how they would exist. See, on an extremely basic atomic and subatomic level, no one is entirely sure about how decisions get made. To use the game's own example here, if I asked you to give me a fact about the number four, some of you would respond it's more than three, and some of you would respond it's less than five, and science does not currently have a grasp on how you'd pick one of those options. This is actually one of the primary things holding back AI research right now, just how basic decisions like that get made. The current workaround is a system will basically learn your patterns of behavior and then replicate them. But obviously, if we're talking about AIs that have never inhabited a human brain, that doesn't really apply. As Legion explains it to you, changing this fairly harmless sounding variable will alter the decision making process of the Geth to the point where they would rather be on your side than supporting the Reapers. Under the game's binary moral choice system, this is suggested to be the right thing to do rather than destroying them. Is it though? This is more complicated than it might sound. At first glance, it's brainwashing. But you know what? In a very minor way, when I put up a message that says please like this video and subscribe to my channel, and by the way, please like this video and subscribe to my channel, 
I'm sort of doing the same thing. No, really, you may not have been inclined to, and I'm attempting to alter your perception in a very specific way, which, if successful, makes you more likely to do the thing I want. So the question has to be, is this any more or less moral because there is a clearly defined outcome and a 100% replicable one? Honestly, my biggest disappointment from Mass Effect's perspective is that it applies the binary moral choice system to this decision at all. I honestly believe that AIs deserve, if they have a human level of awareness, human rights, and I don't have a good answer to this. I have done playthroughs where I chose to change the get's mind, I have done playthroughs where I chose to end them all, and I don't honestly know which one was more fulfilling. It is a big question, and I wish Mass Effect didn't try and claim there was a right or wrong answer. So I'm aware this is a bit of an unusual video, folks. Um, I'm not trying to answer any of these questions for you, I have my own beliefs, but there are people out there with bigger brains than mine, more experienced, who are looking for answers to these, and there may just not be a right or wrong answer. It may just be something we as a society have to decide. I'm just trying to raise awareness of a couple of my favourite topics, honestly. If you'd like to check out more stuff about transhumanism and AIs, there are a couple of things I'd recommend. Uh, first of all, Soma by Frictional Games. It's a walking simulator with a story that covers an awful lot of the same beats that I was talking about here. It's well worth a look. One of my favourite and most thought-provoking video games of the last decade or so, honestly. I hope it was released in the last decade now that I've said that. Anyway, also I would recommend a book called Permutation City by Greg Egan. It talks a lot about perception and human intelligence and the way that relates to the singularity and AIs. Well worth a read anyway. Next week we are going to be taking a look at Mass Effect 3's story and I'm going to be telling you how the problem with it is not the ending. I will see you all then folks. Until then, I have been your Princess Katakayana. You are all beautiful. Peace. I'm out.